17 Finance Committee meeting. Uh, committee members present this evening, myself, Councilor Di Natale, Councilor Donnelly, Councilor Joseph, and President Mike Kushmerick. Also present this evening, Councilors Clark and Boschman, and uh, City Auditor Dick Saracen. Uh, we will start with 20-17 in order that the City of Fitchburg hereby accepts the grants and gifts totaling approximately $31,838.25 for the restoration of the City's two Civil War cannons from those as follows, $16,838.25 grant from the George R. Wallace Foundation, $5,000 grant from the Douglas and Isabella Crocker Foundation, and the balance of approximately 10000 from various grant and fundraising efforts. We have uh, the Mayor's Chief of Staff, uh, Aaron Terigny, here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Councillors. Councillors, this is part of the effort the Mayor's been uh, working on uh, to restore the two carriages to the uh, Civil War uh, era cannons that uh, Congress, Congressman uh, Crocker brought to the City of Fitchburg. Um, uh, as, as you all know, they're in severe disrepair. We have a quote for roughly $31,000 to replace those carriages with an aluminum-like frame. Um, and we're in the process of uh, uh, fundraising those those funds. And we've, as as the chair read off, uh, the Crocker and Wallace Foundation have contributed so far, thankfully to them. And uh, we're in the process of um, receiving the, the the balance of the fund. Motion to accept uh, 2017. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept 2017. Any questions on the motion, Council Joseph? Has any city funds been? No, sir. Okay. And where are the cannons now? Uh, they, during the winter time, they've, they're uh, stored at the DPW yard. Okay. President Kushmer. Just uh, as a fundraiser, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask um, how the city plans on thanking um, the uh, various individuals and foundations that are contributing. I understand. I believe a, I believe a plaque is um, going to be arranged with the, the uh, donors. Perfect. Thank you. Them. Yes, and of course, I would like to point out that uh, Sue Christensen in the Community Development Office also was a great uh, put a great deal of effort in towards uh, writing the, these grant these grants. Excellent. Motion made and seconded to approve 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Council. Thank you. 21-17, in order that there be and hereby is appropriated $90,000 same to be charged against available funds and credited to building expenses City Hall feasibility study. Mr. Therigny and uh, purchasing agent Delaney. Good evening, Councilors. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this, again, is part of the effort of the mayor's, um, and the mayor has been pushing to uh, bring City Hall back to uh, 718 Main Street. And so the first step in that process is to do a feasibility study to determine what the best possible option is for City Hall to move um, uh, back onto Main Street. Uh, we, we did a report was done back in 2000 and Three. 2003 by the Kathy Kang. And, uh, and it, after looking through the report, we've decided that it was severely outdated and we needed to uh, revamp that. So the feasibility study is taking that report into consideration and using using some of the uh, legwork that was already done uh, to, to create a new feasibility study. And, and the chief procurement officer here, Mary Delaney, can certainly add to this. So the uh, feasibility study, we received eight studies. We went through them. Um, one of the cost savings that we're getting is because we're relying on the 2003 study for a lot of the um, prep and foundation work, uh, we were able to get a lower price, I believe, for the feasibility study. Um, we feel very confident in the firm that was chosen. They have a great background, and um, I think they'll have a good product for us. Councilor Joseph. Didn't we just have a group that was tasked to determine a feasibility study for the City Hall, what we were going to do for City Hall? I mean, that um, Fitchburg State, Jay Bry was leading. I mean, didn't we just do this? Like, why, you said 2003. We just did one. Plus, Mayor Wong did one. I don't know who did the 2000. Was that my lot? Mayor Mylot that did the one in 2003? Um, I can speak to that. The, the study that was done was not really a feasibility study. It was a committee that got together to relook at the Kathy Kang report. Um, it, was, it was lay people, great people from the community who wanted to contribute, but a feasibility study focuses on structure 
walls, outdoor, indoor, aesthetics, parking, uh, space needs of the different departments. And they're the experts. They're going to look for um, hazardous material. They're going to look for how things are going to fit on a site. So it's, it's a very detailed report done by professionals. And, and that's not to say that the, what was done before wasn't valuable. It's just that, that this is what you need before you actually move forward. I think the only thing that and I would spend $90,000 for for that city hall is to carry it away in trucks, okay, <laughs> with dynamite. I, I, this is just $90,000 wasted as far as I'm concerned. The feasibility study, I think we've all, I know some people have it in their heart that they would love to renovate that building, but that building is just not renovatable. And I think we just need to come to the realization before we spend another $90,000, or is that what we want to do, spend $90,000 to have somebody else tell us that? I just, I, I, I'm, I'm all set. I don't need to pay $90,000 for somebody to tell me that we're not going to use that building. Maybe we can use the footprint or something, but figure out the cost of demolition and start over again. But that building, we don't even have fire escapes for people to get out of the fourth floor and stuff like that. It's just a health hazard. I mean, we've had a couple of fires in there in the, in the uh, veterans room right next to the mayor's office. We, I mean, we can't, there's one outlet per room for, for power. I, I mean, it, there's no handicap access to the second floor where the planning department was. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I've already, I'll give you the feasibility study. I could then just send me the $90,000, okay? But I think we're wasting $90,000 by doing another th feasibility study on that damn building. I, I, I'm not, let's just figure out a way to demolish it. Uh, Councilor Donnelly. Thank you. Uh, I, I know that it sounds like the feasibility study is only for 718 Main Street. Uh, it was only a few short months ago that people were interested in Rollstone Bank. And then all of a sudden, uh, they can't find a way to come up to buy it. And I had suggested at that time, after a conversation with former city solicitor Debbie Phillips, that there may be a way to buy it. Um, I don't think she charged $90,000 to see if there was a way for us to get it. And there was a price that I don't think you'd have to spend $90,000 to figure out it's going to cost substantially more than Rollstone Bank. Uh, other people have called me about B.F. Brown. I mean, if people's heart is set on 718 Main Street, like Councilor Joseph just said, you don't need a feasibility study to figure out My entire career has been working with old buildings, and there's some buildings that aren't worth saving. Uh, and I think there's more people that love old buildings that don't spend their money on preserving the old buildings. There's lots and lots of people who love old buildings. We should save it, but not with my money is what they say. And I don't know if this is a wise use of taxpayers' money to spend $90,000 to find out if you're in love with the facade, there are ways of saving the facade costs a lot of money to do it. You could tear it down and build a new facade for less money than you could preserving that particular facade. If you've been in any big cities, you've seen them preserve just the facade. It's extremely expensive. And you'd have to change the elevation because of current handicapped access. So uh, I'm really not in favor of spending $90,000 on 718 Main Street for a feasibility study. Uh, B.F. Brown, again, I'll bring it up. Beautiful building. It's not on Main Street. Doesn't have to be the whole building. The building that had the fire, part of that was torn down. There's still plenty of square footage, plenty of parking. It's in a nice location. But really not in favor. And I'd like to see someone actually talk. I don't want to deliver the message. I want the message to come from Deborah Phillips because she's the one indicated to me that there may be a way of getting Rollstone Bank for the price that was discussed before. So that, that's how I feel. I just, Councilor Joseph said it, don't need $90,000 to show that we need a new city hall and it's not going to be that one. Councilor, and, so for the, uh, the city solicitor, I spoke with the state and we, we divulged uh, deeply into the details uh, in terms of um, 
the purchase of uh, other buildings within the city, and the city's at the mercy of a 125 percent rule with the state. And so uh, that's that's why we we did an RFP to find other available and affordable options prior to um, uh, the mayor making a decision to move back or move to 718 Main Street. Uh, for what would be best for the, for the taxpayers' money. After that, there was only one particular building that would have been feasible, um, and we do know that to be the Royal Stone, Royal Stone Bank building. And um, after after speaking with the state and the city solicitor doing uh, his part of uh, of work on it, we came to the conclusion that we can't move forward with that project. Um, uh, with all with all due respect to everything that's been done, I made the suggestion. I don't think the conversation would cost anything, but the advice might. But to date, no one has spoken with the woman okay. that I gave understand. me an idea. I, I could say it right now, but I don't want to. I want someone to talk where the source, where it came from. If it's possible, fine. But if anyone can say that you have talked to her or the city solicitor or the mayor, if there was a way of getting it, I'd be more inclined to go along with your thoughts. Thank you. Council Boschman. I was just wondering, we saw how do we set for 718 Main Street? And we're not looking at, I know <coughs> what you told us before, what you sent out the RFP and everything else. But like I told <coughs> the young lady here, I mentioned Beer Brown. People have mentioned Beer Brown to me. And I feel just like Council Joseph and Council Donnelly and people have stopped and talked to me, and they don't want me to vote for spending money at the old city hall. They don't want that. And, if we're, and I told you, if these are building with study, I feel like he does. Tear it down. It's, I'll give it away to a contractor that wants to fix it up, and Council, lo and behold. I think we need to real BF Brown is... The, the current standing of City Hall, it could be similar to that of B.F. Brown. I mean, B.F. Brown has had a, a, a giant hole in its roof, and for the past, you know, four or five months, 30 or 40 inches of snow have gone into that building on top of rain. And it would, we would be required a feasibility study of, to some extent on how to move forward with B.F. Brown regardless uh, where City Hall would be moving. That still requires a hefty amount of engineering work, space planning, and there's still hazardous material. All that we're doing, the same amount of things that we're doing for City Hall, we would have to, at 718 Main Street, we would have to do with the BF Brown building. So we're, we're, still, we're still in this, we're still in the same, the option's the same of having to do a feasibility study. Right now we're just talking about location. And, and after speaking with all the engineers, we spoke with eight different groups, and the cost of construction to renovate, and we don't know that this is the purpose of this feasibility study. We don't know if we're going to re renovate the entire building. If it's partial construct, I mean, partial demolition, restoration, and new construction, or just full out renovation or full out demolition. That's the purpose of this feasibility study. The feasibility study that was produced in 2003 is 14 years old. The cost of construction and engineering work 14 years from now is totally different and does require a second look. And even, even so, the, the group that was assembled in 2014 to look at the report from 2003 recommended that the city hall be renovated, not demo. Uh, not demo. So this will, give, this will provide us a final answer on how to, pro, pro, to, to move forward and how to remain, uh, how to keep city offices out of the, the, current, the current space, 166 Boulder Drive, is not a, pr a productive means of conducting city business, and we all know that. This we this, a city hall is is required for the for the for the for the uh, for the city, and and this feasibility study will certainly tell us the best means of doing that. Can I ask a question, sir? Who said this? I, I understand the the work is down there. I don't like it because they got cubicles, <clears throat> but the people like it because everything's on one floor the people that pay the bills like it because everything's on one floor and they can go to that window they can go to this window and they can go to that window mm -hmm. they don't have to climb up the stairs they don't have to press a button they go up to the elevator they don't have to do any of that there's ant parking so they like it they literally like it 
Second of all, as I see it, and I've been told by numerous counselors, we are not good people to own property because we don't maintain it. We don't maintain it. Yeah, we pay rent, and we don't own it, but we don't have any of the headaches. All we got to pay for is the guy to come in here, clean it, clean it up, pay him, and we pay the lights and we pay the heat. We don't have to worry about the roof leaking. We don't have to worry about the windows leaking. We don't have to worry about any of that. So sometimes I wonder, what are we going to do here? I mean, I was, you know. Counselor, the, the past city hall, you have to understand, that went through how, a couple of, uh, at least a 200 years of reconstruction, if you will, of mayors going in and, and dividing up the building. And the building, when it first was originally created, was the perfect size for the, the municipality that it was holding. But now that the city has grown to 40,000 people, that current city hall did, wasn't, wasn't conducive for the, the public. And you're correct. Yes, that is true. And that is also the purpose of why we're doing this feasibility study, which provides space programming <clears throat> and, allows, and allows the city to, cr to have a, a city hall that's conducive for, for public engagement. President Kushmar. So it was earlier brought up that there was a couple of separate committees under the previous um, Long administration uh, <clears throat> asking for their recommendations about what to do with City Hall. So it wasn't, an, it wasn't a, an engineering assessment. It wasn't a feasibility study. But it asked from various constituencies, from boards, from commissions who were assembled of what is the value? How should we prioritize, we as a city, how, we sh how should we prioritize you know, saving City Hall um, versus having a functional building versus um, demolition? That committee twice, after it was asked to go back for a second recommendation, twice came up with the priority should be on maintaining that building and preserving its use as a municipal building uh, for government moving forward. So twice we asked for that input. I think now we're looking for uh, an engineering assessment to say, structurally, what can it do? How can we utilize this building? Is it best served being raised? Is it best served uh, being converted? And I think ultimately, we don't know what it's going to cost until this gets done. Uh, it may come back and say, you know, the price is half what it was, you know, 13 years ago because the scope of work would change. You know, ultimately, I don't think we know until you, until you have engineers go in and say, what can we do with this building? How can we reconfigure space? I'd like to think engineering science has changed in the 15 years since that last feasibility study was done. Uh, I work in an engineering school, I can tell you, they would tell you it's changed dramatically in 15 years about how they use space and how they reconfigure space. Um, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see what they come back with. Ultimately, where else would we like our city hall? Are we saying, if we turn this down, we're saying that we like everything as it is now. That's not what I've heard from my residents uh, in Ward 4. I haven't heard that this situation is ideal. I mean, I think we've made it work to the best of our ability. I think in some senses it's been an improvement um, over what we had before, but we're not looking to go back to what it was before. We're not looking to go back to how City Hall was 15 years ago. We're looking to say, how can we re-engineer, how can we re-imagine uh, this space, make it work for you know, uh, 21st century City Hall and municipal government? Um, I look at it and, and say, as we meet in a middle school library, is, this, is our municipal uh, offices working for us now? Is this where we want our long-term council chambers and meeting space of the city to be? Is this the gateway that we want for our city moving forward over the next 100 years? I would say not. I don't know that that, that reworking um, City Hall is, is the ultimate plan. I don't know that it's worth mortgaging our future, but we don't know until we get this plan. <clears throat> I think it's incumbent upon us to spend money wisely, get a feasibility plan, and say, how do we then make the decision, whether it's to demolish the building whether it's to uh, re-engineer and reconstruct that building uh, or whether or not it's to look elsewhere. But I don't want to spend more city time or efforts or resources on putting out additional RFPs uh, for buildings that we can't have. We've gone through the process over the course of over a year now at this point to look at spaces throughout the city. And, you know, th this is obviously the first I'm hearing of this, Councilor Donnelly, that there could be new life into uh, one of the buildings that we had previously looked at. But... At this point, it sounds like we've exhausted our our, um, uh, our options, and, and uh, for me, this is a no-brainer. We should go forward. You're not getting roped into a decision that 718 Main Street is is and will be the next city hall, but I, I think we need to hear what um, 
what this feasibility study comes back with <clears throat> and then make an informed decision from that point. Thank you. So the, the discussions about BF Brown, I don't even count those because if people have forgotten, we've already committed that building to New View and the CDC for an artist colony. So it ain't going to be a city hall. And if people want that to be a city hall, then we need to go back and reverse our vote. Although I didn't vote for it. I know you didn't, Council Boschman, but the majority of the council voted to make that a artist colony. So that's what we told the city to go forward and do in the previous administration. The comments made in this room by some councilors completely valid. I share them. You folks are unfortunately a casualty to the situation of the city is study happy in the last 20 years. So when we hear that there's another study being done, everybody is rightfully skeptical about what it's going to do and if we're going to have any action on it. Main Street's a perfect example. You know, we've had like 15 studies on Main Street that never had any action on it. We had a study, feasibility study in 2003 for City Hall. I'm upset, and I know hindsight's 2020, but we should all be upset about the fact that, once again, this is another example of bad management prior to the last decade, in that we do a feasibility study at a certain cost. Why did we do one? After that study was done, the building kept deteriorating. It kept falling into a state of disrepair. So what do we do it for? So naturally, we've got counselors in this room, including myself, that are going, here goes another feasibility study. Is the same thing going to happen? Is nothing going to happen? So it's, hard, it's a hard sell. Not so much the necessity of it, but it's a hard sell because of the past. So I share uh, President Kushmerich's sentiment about residents. Most people have said to me, do something. They didn't necessarily say, keep it the way it is. I think everybody in the city, whether you're for it or against it, don't want that current structure to be where it is right now. Either people want it knocked down and rebuilt from the ground up, or they want it renovated, or they want something done with it. They don't want it to stay in its current state, so at the very least, we have to knock it down. Um, I feel like this is a casualty to the situation. In order to assess appropriately what we tried to do 14 years ago, with costs going up and in inflation, maybe this is different only because our bonding capacity is going to be opened up in three short years. I, I, I'm just guessing. I don't know. But I sh certainly understand the sentiments raised in this room because when someone hears that we're going to use $90,000 of free cash, you know what they say to me first now? Why can't a couple of roads be repaved with that money? What do you say to them? So can, can you just, folks, can you explain what if the feasibility study doesn't get conducted? What happens? What happens? Uh, Mayor, Mayor Di Natale is here with us. Mr. Chairman, thank you. We will remain on Boulder Drive. It was brought up earlier by, by uh, uh, Councillor Donnelly, the uh, Rollstone Bank property. I thought we made it quite clear why that didn't happen. I don't think we need to revisit that. There's a procurement law that exists in the state that pre prevents us from doing that. I am not an expert. I don't think there's anyone else in this build in this room that's an expert that would that would be able to garner the information we're going to get. We're going to secure from this feasibility study. I don't know what the capital conditions existed back when those other studies were were completed. Today we are prepared to take on that capacity. I believe the auditor will will attest to that. My intent is to make that feasibility study into a reality, whatever it comes back and tells us. We're going to have to make some choices. We're looking at making that a campus type of facility. The Bank of America building, we're in negotiations with them. I'm confident we're going to have a, a, a positive result from that. This will be part of that feasibility study. Tell us what they can do with that building along with the old city hall. Maybe we keep the facade. Maybe we demo the entire thing. But again, I think the people of Fitchburg want Main Street. They want City Hall on, at 718 Main Street. If you recall back to the commission that was uh, that was established, that was one of the one of the key issues of where City Hall is at 718 Main Street. When they built it there initially, you could see it far down the boulevard. That was an architectural feature that grabbed people. 
that made them, that, that know, you know you're in downtown Fitchburg, there's your city hall. You could see it from a quarter mile down the road. We need to put it back there. This is $90,000 that's well spent. But again, that money we're going to spend, we're going to move forward with what that plan tells us. Because City Hall needs to be back on Main Street, not at B.F. Brown School. And if you wanted to think about B.F. Brown School, you'd have to do a feasibility study for that building. So one way or the other, you're going to be coming up with some cash. This is doable. This is what we should be doing. Thank you. Council Joseph. What are we paying to lease the space that we're in a year? Thirty-five. Yeah. I... I uh, I think it's... He asked how much how we much currently the, lease the Putnam Place for. I don't have the uh, full amounts, but I, I think it's around 135 uh, with an escalator clause that went into effect January right. of this year. Right. Um, so it may be a little higher, maybe 145. And how much space is still available to build out in that building? I, I'm not sure. There's still know. empty... A warehouse section, excuse me. Further past the clerk's office is right. still empty, right? Right. That we're using it right now for storage. <coughs> I think that's the area. So I, I it's just, probably limited because of the you, you still need storage space too. Right. I, I just I I think we could have city council chambers down there. I think that like it's like it's mentioned, we're not very good building maintainers okay we didn't even have a fire alarm system that worked in the old building everybody knew it everybody would hold everybody else to a code but we didn't even have a fire alarm that you could pull in the fire alarm would go off in that building it's just to me it's just throwing away good money after bad we've got a, a building that's modern it's been outfitted for us we can continue to outfit it so that we can get the people that are downstairs in the library and other spaces into that building and probably even put our council chambers there. But I don't understand why we're not looking at a feasibility study of how we could expand at <coughs> Boulder Drive as opposed to three whatever Main Street it is. I just don't understand the love for that spot on Main Street when we have a modern building. And if you've got money to spend on a feasibility study, I mean, on, on renovating or, or doing this building over, why can't we make an arrangement with um, the redevelopment authority to do something different and make Boulder Drive work for us? We're there. Why do we have to keep moving it? You're asking me? Yeah. That was a makeshift effort because we had to get out of City Hall. Okay, it's not ideal. It's not even close to being ideal, Council. You know, we could reconfigure the, the, the building. That's going to cost money as well to fit out. But again, it's not, it's, it's an image. It's not on Main Street. City halls are on Main Street in the United States. That's where they belong. Ours is not just a city hall on Main Street. It was an architectural beauty, still is, and I'm not suggesting we're going to keep that. Again, I need to know what this feasibility study tells me. They may say to me, we can maintain the front, as Councillor Donnelly mentioned. The, the facade can be restored. We can build out from there partial demolition, maybe complete demolition. But I believe it should be there. And again, we have the capacity to absorb this bonding effort. You know, I, I don't want to throw out any figures, so I'm not going to do that. But it is doable right now, along with some of the other capital needs that we have. And you've heard this. Councilor Donnelly, you're a builder, you're a, a, a contractor, a property owner. People always rather build to suit, not try to reconfigure what's already there. This new city hall will be a 21st century city hall. The infrastructure will be prepared for the 21st century. It's the way to go. It's what we should do. And I believe $90,000 is money well spent that's going to tell us how we go about doing that. 
And I'm and what what everything else that's that's happening in that area with Fitchburg State University across the street. With those efforts, we've got the Research Associates building. There's some things happening there. This is preparing for an explosion of development and interest. A lot of foot traffic. And again, I mentioned the bank. We have the opportunity to make that a real bustling area in the city of Fitchburg. And it will, they'll tie in both ends. The Morin Square area that's undergoing a transformation and as well as up where City Hall is. This is an opportunity. We can't pass it up. Just to, just to highlight the fact that Lemonster City Hall is on West Street. Okay. But, so but it's it within their downtown. Be, it doesn't have to be. It's, it's within their downtown. You, you see it. You're there. You're in their downtown. Uh, Boulder Drive is not, is not a city hall. It never will be. It's, it's what we have today because we, has, we have no alternative. But President Kushmark, I would just add, if we were so curious about Putnam, we'd have to be willing to probably come up with somewhere in the ballpark of another ninety thousand dollars to do a feasibility study on what it would take to That's get right. Putnam done. So if we're really that curious, we have to be comfortable saying yes to yet another feasibility study. At the end of the day, yeah. we're, we've been asking for an investment in our downtown of all of the other private <clears throat> stakeholders and other public stakeholders, how do we tell everyone else, how do we tell research results, you need to stay in downtown Fitchburg and make this your long-term home? How do we tell Fitchburg State University, who just bought the theater block? How do we tell Fitchburg Art Museum, um, who's continuing to increase their endowment and, and work to fit out their museum? How do we tell New View Communities, building B.F. Brown, this is your home, this is the future of Fitchburg when we aren't able and, and willing to invest in our downtown ourselves. At some point, we have to be able to do that. I know the mayor is committed to the you know, Longs Joe uh, Middle School as well and fixing up that building. At some point, we have to commit to our downtown. We've spent an incredible amount of resources and time already. Why would we get to 80% and say, well, we're done, we're unwilling to go the next 20? At some point, I think we have to examine our options. And again, we're not locking ourselves into you know $20 million you know, to, to make City Hall work. We're saying, Let's spend 90, let's, let's educate ourselves on the best options available to us, and then uh, let's proceed from there. But at some point, I think we have to be willing to tell everyone else, we're, we're, we have skin in the game too, and we're willing, to, we're willing to match your investment, and we'll be the long-term player and investor just uh, alongside you. Thank you. Mr. President, I, you brought up an uh, outstanding point for uh, Councilor Joseph. Even if we were to stay at Boulder Drive, and the procurement officer and myself, my staff, we've already had this discussion, believe me. We've, we have examined a number of options because there, 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 are, there are resources at stake here. But you're absolutely right. If we were to stay at Boulder Drive, we would require another feasibility study. We'd have to have an architectural space firm come in and say, this is how everything should be set up. Because if you'll notice, the building is not set up properly for the business that the people deserve in the city of Fitchburg. It's just not. I, wanted, I, I would have to have it all reconfigured, adding in the warehouse section, reconfiguring when people walk in, they go to the clerk's office, they go to the assessor's office or the treasurer's office. It's got to be set up differently if we're going to stay there. So that's going to cost money as well. And that study may be the same as what we're paying now, that 90000 I don't know. But it would require a complete overhaul of, wh of where we are now. It, it's, it's just, it, it, really, it really makes sense. I know it's difficult to free up 90,000 of available funds for this purpose. But again, I have a goal in mind. I'm asking you to trust me. I know that, how, how we are in, in, the, in, in the 20th century with trust. Trust me, we have a goal in mind. I don't know what happened back in 03. Maybe the feasibility was st study was done and there was never any intention to go beyond that. We have an intention to go beyond that. We want to act upon that study. Thank you. Council Donnelly. I'm certainly not sticking up for <coughs> Boulder Drive. That's, it's much better for the general public than it is for the people that work there. 
There's, there's Point, no question honestly. about that. Yep. And I, I've, I've kept my mouth shut about one item. In 1988, I went to a seminar in Texas, National Association of Home Builders, and they had a, it's a office building design. If you work in a big building in Boston, and you're inside like this, a promotion doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. You get closer to a window. In 718 Main Street, everybody had a window. Everybody. In Boulder Drive, very few people have a window. And it's just something that people want. It's not a skylight. It's natural light out the window. So Boulder Drive is not the best spot. But there are some amenities there for the general public that I haven't heard a complaint from a consumer. They may not like the appearance, and they always wonder what the old city is going to happen to the old city hall. But I'm getting back to the point where if Rollstone Bank was under consideration at some time, and the price was right, and you certainly can't build a city hall for that price, and... From what I hear, all efforts were exhausted, but I still think there's one more. And I heard, I heard, and I believe that there may be a way to get Rollstone Bank. I want to see everything exhausted. And a former city solicitor mentioned a particular way, and I just wanted somebody, not Tom Donnelly, to a counselor. I'm not in charge. Counsel, why don't you share that with us? What, what is the, I, the... Because I want either you or the this, this city solicitor to just run it by her. I, I'm all for... I, I'm all for oh, just ask the question. Is there a way to get that bank, a legal way for Fitchburg to get the bank and make it a city hall? Keeping that, in mind, the bank has to agree to it. That's absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There, there, yep. Therein lies the rub, as the bard says. Well... You know, I'll just go, I'll give you a little bit of hint that sometimes government can get buildings without an agreement of the seller. So if that's any kind of a hint, um, I, I just like to exhaust all things. It's a, it's a wonderful location. It's how many feet away? A hundred, 200 feet away. Same parking, same general area. I don't know if you can see the boulder. I know that you can see Rollstone Hill. I know you can see the qu old quarry. I know you can see the rock that's painted. I know it's in the center of downtown, and Fitchburg Savings has been in the center of downtown for forever. I'm just saying I like to see that part exhausted before I support 718 Main Street. And I just don't think everything's been exhausted. But we do need a city hall. We need something that's convenient, good for the workers, and good, equally good for the consumers. As Councilor Boschman said, the consumers are the taxpayers. Those are the people that use City Hall. Those are the ones that pay everyone's bills. That's why they have, we have people that are employed to run the city. But I, I, if that's exhausted, I support the plan 100%. But until that happens, I'm not supporting it. Uh, Madam Procurement Officer, can you cite that 125% issue? Can you uh, illuminate that, please? I think the 125 is actually something that comes more under the finance, the DOR. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't relate directly to procurement, but my understanding is that you cannot pay, a municipality cannot pay more than 125% of the assessed value for any property. Are you, are you suggesting eminent domain? I'm not suggesting. I'm suggesting someone call, talk to Debbie Phillips, that's all. Councilor Joseph. And, that, and I just, I guess I'm not, I'm still stuck on the fact that why isn't Boulder Drive Main Street? We have a front side of Main Street. We have a back side of Main Street. It's one way this way. It's one way that way. To say that... Because we're on Boulder Drive, we haven't made an investment in Fitchburg. If you remember the 
the property on Boulder Drive was the GE <coughs> building, which the GE company abandoned on us and gave it to the redevelopment authority, or it was purchased. It was saved by the city, okay, through the help of the, the mayor at the time, Mayor Whitney, and we ended up with the redevelopment authority and the whole bit. We saved Boulder Drive because it was a main part of downtown Fitchburg. And now basically you're saying it's not even part of downtown Fitchburg. It's there. It's a big part. If we abandon Boulder Drive, what's going to – that building was three-quarters empty before we got there. And now we're one of the main occupants of that building. And I, and I think since we've been there, there's even been more interesting people going there. So we've helped build Boulder Drive because we're occupying that space. And basically saying, you're saying that there's no value to us being on Boulder Drive. To me, there's just as much value as us being on Boulder Drive as there are being on Main Street. We're just abandoning one building that's downtown to go to another building that's downtown. And, and I, my, only, my only thing here is that that building is archaic. It has no, it has, the facade of it has some historical value, but it's been erased because we added on the back part of it. So there's really no historical value to that building. Okay, and which, because it's on Main Street, if you're looking for $90,000 to have somebody say, demolish it, I will gladly sign on to it. Okay, but if you're asking for $90,000 to ask somebody to look into how to renovate it, I won't spend another penny That's on that building. That is what the study will tell you. I would rather have $90,000 to say how we can better fit 88 or whatever Boulder Drive so that we fit in there because it's a modern building than I would to spend $90,000 on a building that needs to be raised. I, I just, <coughs> we're, we're throwing good money after bad. And I, and I know I, I fully respect your vision and I, and I fully respect you, Mayor, because I think we've always been on the same page for the majority of our careers. I'm just not on the same page. I've lived Main Street. I've lived the City Hall for 18 years, okay? And <clears throat> I, just, I just don't want to live that chapter anymore. We're past that. And people just hold on to it like it's the tree that they can't get rid of, okay? Stop holding on to the damn tree and move on. Okay, it's it's over. Motion to hold twenty one seventeen. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to hold twenty one seventeen. Speaking on that, I just want to identify the fact that as Councilor Kushmerick stated earlier, we did have a city hall subcommittee that was chaired by Councilor Caddy, uh, where they recommended renovating City Hall. And former Mayor Wong was quoted several times saying that she envisioned a build out in that area too. I recall Mayor Wong saying over and over again that the future of City Hall is not at Boulder Drive when she first moved us there. And she reiterated that repeatedly. One of the very few things I actually agree with her on during her eight years. Um, but her, her vision when she was in office is no different than the current administration's vision about what the future of that building should be. So uh, all I'm saying to that effect is, maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen a large outcry from counselors of not keeping it where it was. I do, however, understand the sensitivity of the subject because as I said earlier, you folks are a casualty to the history of the city where we are study happy and nothing happens. So yes, I think you said it earlier that it's a trust factor and it's a leap of faith. I mean, you can't blame anybody for feeling that way because we spend tens of thousands on study after study and nothing happens. But as to the future of City Hall, I don't recall anybody in this room ever saying emphatically that Boulder Drive is the future of City Hall. Lisa Wong didn't say it. Maybe you did, Council Joseph. I, I, I don't remember. Fine, you said it fine. But I remember quite a few of us didn't say that because we always, I always expected it to be a temporary fix until we figured out what to do with this because we spent so much money to move that we knew it wasn't going to end there. So th this isn't like this is a complete, this isn't a complete 180 of what 
was originally proposed or originally thought to be a solution. It's always been at the front and forefront of renovating or rebuilding that area. This is nothing new. The problem I have, which frustrates me, is we did feasibility studies over a decade ago and nothing happened. And then we had eight years of an administration after that that didn't do any feasibility studies. So it's like, it's a casualty to the situation. I, I get it, and I also, also understand the necessity to be on Main Street because that's been the vision since we moved out of that building from both the head of the city at that time and a majority of the city council and the city council subcommittee and the historical society. So I've never seen a full-on push to rebuild out uh, Boulder Drive. Um, not to say it's not a good option. My concern is if this feasibility study comes back with a whole list of options and costs, worst case scenario, we don't do anything there. We still have to knock the building down. So I'm just curious, just from my own knowledge, how much is that? Do we have any idea what that building is going to cost to raise? In, in my limited one-year knowledge of demolition, close to half a million dollars probably. Okay. I, I, just, I just know from discussing things with, with residents over the last, I, I don't remember when we moved out. When did we move out? 2011, 2012? I, I don't remember. But m most people who've talked to me don't want to see it sitting in its current state. So at the very least, it's got to come down. Um, but, but again, so. again, Council, we don't, that's what this will tell us. I, I we've, mean, got, we've got an architectural firm that's noted throughout the Commonwealth for doing these kinds of projects, restoring old public buildings. I, I understand. The twenty first century uh, I said, standards. I said repeatedly already that that's, this is a casualty this is, to, this is a casualty to the situation. No matter what we do, where we end up, I'm gonna have to commission a study. So let's not be averse to studies because it tells you what you should and can do. I'm not an engineer or an architect. I don't think there are any in the room here tonight, are there? That's why we rely on these kinds of firms to tell us this information, to give us those options. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to hold. Uh, any other questions from committee members only? All those in, I, mean, uh, I have one question. What, if we hold this, what are we, what are we requesting the administration do before before I bring it back. What is the purpose of holding it? Do I bring it back in two weeks or do I, is there a request we have before I bring this back? Uh, Council Donald? You got an even number of people here? Or an odd number? You got five? five There's members? four committee members right now. You want to have it go uh, two to two or do you want to give it a chance? I still, I'd still like to see someone talk to Debbie Phillips about that other building. Councilor, that I, way, every, in my opinion, everything's exhausted. <coughs> if it's not exhausted, because I said it's a lot of building for a little bit of money. Councilor, I made the motion with the intent of it coming back in two weeks with a full five-member committee uh, vote. Okay. Right. Motion made and seconded to hold 2117. All those in favor of holding. Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councillors. Motion made and second to adjourn. All those in. Oh, before I adjourn, I just wanted the public to understand and know that Mr. Saracen to my left here is retiring in two weeks, week and a half. Yeah, week and a half. <laughs> I, yeah. I wanted to say on the committee's behalf, chairing this committee for the last six years and for the uh, residents of Fitchburg, how, how big of an asset he has been for the last 30 plus years. And his breadth of knowledge of municipal government is going to be sorely missed. It's going to be big shoes to fill. And I just wanted to thank you for your time, attention, and diligence uh, on behalf of the city's taxpayers and its employees for the work that you did for us, the great work you did for us. This is his last finance committee meeting. He gets his Tuesdays back. I <laughs> just want to uh, thank you, Councillor, for those kind words and, and say it was a pleasure and an honor to serve this very important committee all those years. Thank you. Thank you. Motion made, seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.